because those pine martens are out to feed on small mammals, like 31% field vole, 2.6% wood mouse. Look at this. Here's the pine martin. It's coming along the top of the wall, and all of a sudden its behaviour changes. It goes into stealth mode and then dives down really quickly. Bit of repositioning, and look what we see. I'm afraid that wood mouse has had its last peanut. We looked at it very closely. Initially, we thought it was a vole. And in fact, if you do look closely, you can see its tail is too long, and it's undoubtedly a wood mouse. Now, what's unusual here is that we would expect the pine martin to gulp that down. Fresh meat, freshly caught. Instead of which, it just carries it and puts it on the wall, and then it seemed to abandon it. Now, I was reading today about the diet of these animals, and they certainly prefer field voles all over their range, particularly here in Scotland. Only a tiny percentage wood mice. So perhaps they don't like the taste of those wood mice. Yes, yes. What they also found out that they do like the taste of is deer carrion. About 30% of their diet is deer carrion. So there's every chance that that pine martin could, if we're very lucky, end up on our carcass cam. But let's go back live now because now I think we can see two pine martins at the same time. There's oh, one there, tree, tree, yeah. one at the top of the vertical thing. You notice that we've put some rope there with some food in a container. Mm -hmm. We're determined to test the agility mm -hmm. of these animals to see if we can tempt them off of the upright trunks and out onto that rope to see if they can get the food that's hanging there. So far, no take oh, oh, Let's see what happens oh. here. No, that would be too good. It's found some bait that we've got in the, in the crook of the tree. Is it agile enough to go across that rope? Let's have a look. I'm going to see the wine. Yes, can, can we go? Can we see the rope? Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's going to do. Go on, go on. You see scrolls doing this all the time. Oh, it it boggled it. it. But it thought about it. It did think about it for a moment. Look at the end of the way it was climbing down there. So, you know, it climbs down head first, twisting its ankles. But you know what? There is a lot of food around, and if I was a pine martin and I, was, I could get food on the bottom, then I wouldn't bother to go on. Well, that's what we'd expect. We'd eat, they eat all that first, and when they're pushed, then they have to go for that. So I would suggest we sort of cut down on the peanuts on the ground and put something really tasty, deer carrying perhaps, in that little pot hanging on the... Uh, on the, on the road. We've had a couple of comments at home. Tim Mycroft said, I saw a pine martin on Saturday morning in broad daylight at Stirling University campus. What was it studying? Cookery, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and Devon, someone from Devon wanted to know if they'll ever get pine martins down south in Devon. They used to occur all over the UK, and they were ruthlessly persecuted, sadly. They are spreading from the north down into northern England. We think that they've been found as far south as Newcastle, um, some even in Yorkshire. So mm, it's going to be a long time, unless we're allowed to reintroduce them. But some people are not very keen on that idea, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, we've been talking a lot about, on the programme about how animals struggle when the temperatures drop, but some animals thrive in more Arctic conditions. Martin headed off in his thermals to the Cairngorms to do a, a little bit of off-piece twitching. The Cairngorm Mountains, where temperatures can reach minus 27, is not the easiest place to make a living. While most small birds prefer lower altitudes, there's one hardy little character which seems to thrive in these hostile environments. The snow bunting. This snow bunting is a beautiful little compact bird. And the male's got a bit more white, so particularly on his wings and the female. Now sometimes you'll see little flocks of snow buntings feeding around patches of snow. And I think what's going on is that insects, invertebrates, have been blown up the mountain in the wind, and I can easily understand that. <laughs> and when they get to a patch of snow, obviously they can't live there, so they'll become comatose or they'll die. And the buntings just work their way around the patches of snow. But you haven't exploited any food source if you're going to try and live up here, so these buntings working around the ski resort as well and it's anything they can find. Proper survivors. I've seen the crop in the ground. Breeding. There and all there. 50 pairs breed here. But here's the 
interesting. Then they did that 